Florida. Traveled to Utah. Utah, 24. Florida, 11. Mm. One word to describe. I'm going to go ahead and give you my word first. One word to describe Florida, the Florida football team, based off that game, dysfunctional. That's a good word. I've got one for you. You ready? Let me have it. Slow. (laughs) Dysfunctional and slow. Not good words you want to use when describing a football team. Not good words at all. Not good words at all. That's the opposite of what you want. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go ahead and establish this. Utah, they're a good football team. They are, man. I mean, without your QB1, that's impressive. Yeah. Yes. They rotated guys at that position. I mean, three dudes, you know, saw, uh, had the opportunity to put the ball in the air, you know, um, but they ran really well and they're, they're always physical. They have a, they have a, uh, an, an, an edge defender, white dude, number 83. Looks just like a Utah football player would, right? No swag yes. about him, nothing on his arms, nothing on his hands, just out there making plays, making life miserable for Florida on that night. Yes. Uh, Jonah Ellis, you you, you reminded me of, of yes. that guy. I mean, textbook definition of, of Utah football, hates offensive success for the other team, doesn't want to give you an inch. I mean, just that's Utah football in a nutshell. And that group made – Florida's not just a living hell on yes. last Thursday night. And and it wasn't fun any bit of the game for them. Don't know what they're doing. I mean, I'm just – seriously, I have questions about what they're doing. I spoke to a Florida fan on Sunday, and I was trying to be nice. I said, I, I'm not talking smack because they've owned Tennessee for the better part of two decades. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what they're doing. I, I just don't – I don't understand it. It doesn't, it doesn't look like winning football or, or a, an attempt at winning football. Yeah. I don't recognize that program for what they were in my childhood and when I was coming up. I think the greatest question now is if that continues, how much longer will Billy Napier continue in Gainesville? They've got 31 million reasons. It's really just 5 million reasons to make it as long to, to make it into 2024 because, you know, a whopping $31 million buyout drops down to 26 million after next season is what I've heard. But those are both large sums of money. You can't afford to, to just sit around and get behind. I mean, if you want to hire Deion Sanders and try to fix it in one year, you could, but that's not what they're going to do. I mean, that's, again, money, money, money. They, I, I just I don't recognize what they're doing. It doesn't look like a winning product. I don't know that I believe in coaches like Dan Mullen, like Billy Napier, like Charlie Strong or Will Muschamp, if you will. Yeah. Wait around and wait around and wait around for the perfect job or the big job that they want. It just doesn't work out. As more times than not, it seems. Sure, it worked out for Kirby, sure. but I mean, it just it doesn't work out all the time. I don't understand it. I I don't know what he's what he's even trying to do half the time because I don't I don't even believe that Graham Mertz is the best quarterback they could have got out of the portal. And in many ways, they're just a quarterback away if they had a if they had a a solid dude at quarterback that could do so much more. Mm-hmm. But and, and Mertz wasn't bad. He wasn't the reason they lost. But they could do a right. lot more there. Right. Mertz's stats are a little inflated because they spent most of the time trying to come back. 31 for 44, 333 yards, a score and a pick. QBR is good for 30.4, which is incredibly low. You're you're right. They did not lose because of him. They lost because of dysfunction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you force a punt but and you and, and that's negated because you have two number threes on your field, that's management. That's management of your roster. They they have essentially a quality control guy as their game changer coordinator, not their special right. teams coordinator. Right. Is my understanding that's that's the worst vibe in the world for a guy for guys like us that have been through the the coach speak uh, you know gauntlet. You you brought in Montreal Johnson from from his last stop down in Louisiana. He got three carries. You have Travis Trevor ETN. You gave him mm-hmm. seven carries. You didn't start this game down twenty one points. Right. Why in the world were they not a bigger part of your game plan? And I know that both of them had some receptions, but their passing game looks like, where's Pearsall? Where's Pearsall? Where's the tight yes. end? Where's the line of scrimmage throw? It doesn't yes. look like let's challenge a defense. Let's make it life hard for them. Let's spread it around. It looks like let's survive and, I don't know, let's survive and try not to get killed. Exactly. Exactly. Florida's going to have to figure it out and figure it out fast. And you mentioned something. You mentioned Deion Sanders earlier. Florida fans have got to be looking at Colorado going, wait a second, we're in year two. They're in year one. They just upset a top 15 team in the country 
on their own turf. And we just, I'm not sure what we just did. What was that? So we're Florida, you're Colorado. Like what, what's going on here at this rate? Auburn has set a tone. Hey, right. Year two, we don't care. We'll get you out of here. You think Florida's going to hesitate to pull that trigger? Other than other, they'll they'll find the money. Oh, if yeah. they want to, they'll they'll find the money. It's a matter of you know, do they want to swallow that and get it and 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 get that covered? You know, uh, on his buyout. However, Florida is going to host McNeese State next week, Saturday night. In the swamp, they'll have one game to get it together uh, to get it together before Tennessee comes to town, and they better do it fast. Yeah, I mean, those are the things that'll escalate and and find more reasons to get that money in line. If you have a losing streak, even if it's two against Tennessee, if you lose to Tennessee at home for the first time in twenty years, I don't think I don't think Utah is a bad team. And again, they won that game by thirteen points with relative ease without their QB one. But Florida's got, like you said, got major issues. Major play calling issues to me, where I just don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and and again, it just seems so antiquated, so limited what they can do offensively or what they even try to do. So yeah, major things to figure out because you know one thing you should expect is that Tennessee should want to come down there and put as much pressure on their offense as they can by scoring points, scoring them fast. That's what I expect to happen. We'll see what happens, but the pressure is going to be real. Yeah, and it's not going to get any easier for Flor- for Florida. Obviously, they're going to host us. They're going to travel to Kentucky. They're going to travel to South Carolina. They're going to host Arkansas. They're going to travel to LSU. They're going to host Florida State at the end of the year. It's going to be rough for these guys. Sure is. They've got a long, lot of work to do. Yep. Again, they're going to need to figure it out and figure it out fast. <laughs> 